All right, we are recording. Oh okay. my gosh, I just got nervous. <laughs> okay, okay, well, I am Diamond Leader Audrey Sinka, and this is Presidential Diamond Terry Sestina. <laughs> okay, tonight we're going to tell our stories, um, and then we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to talk about how we work the business very differently because we have very different lives and we have very different color personalities, but we're also really, really good close friends as sideline sisters, which is super awesome. So, um, and then we'll open it up to a little bit of Q&A. So that's just to give you a rundown. And I'm going to let Terry go first because the thought of going first kind of makes me want to puke. So I'm going to let you go first and tell your story um, okay. of why you joined, et cetera, et cetera, and what you've done so far with the business and then where you're going. And then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, Audrey and I both know each other through Krista Pettengill, who's an ambassador diamond. And um, Krista and I were friends uh, through through the army and um, for our husbands. And she had she had moved. So we were we met in Fort Campbell. And she had moved, and she you know we were main Facebook friends and all of that. And we were like close friends. You know, we would hang out all the time and stuff when we lived together. Well, she started posting about all this, and I was like. I was a teacher at the time, a special ed teacher, um, and my this was 2013 was when I started, so it was about that time, and I was super skeptical because she was posting out the raps and all that, and I was like, what is this, you know, like, Chris is so sweet, she didn't want to say no to somebody, so anyway, I, I was skeptical at first, um, but I had been going through a really bad season of postpartum anxiety, depression, um, I was you know, Mikhail was my son. He's seven now. He was about a year old and I was still dealing with it. Like I was still, um, just literally pushing myself through every day. Like it was hard and, um, not myself at work, like not putting in full effort really with anything. Cause like making dinner was hard. Like just everything was hard. And, um, I had never dealt with that level of anxiety before. And I had, talk to my doctor about meds, but didn't really want to do that. So what got me was when Krista posted about Confianza and I was like, Oh, they have other stuff. Like I thought they had the wraps and I was rapidly losing weight that I didn't want to be losing because I was going through so much anxiety. So I wasn't really interested in like weight loss or anything like that. Um, and so I saw, you know, this, natural stress relief thing. And I was like, that sounds like it would fit my life right now. And she was also making a lot of money. And one of the extra stressors in our life on top of postpartum issues was we were strapped for cash. My husband had just gotten out of the army to go back to school and we were on my teaching salary and we had not planned long-term for that. So we, we sat down and we were like, okay, we're going to be in X amount of debt without any savings if we do this for the next four years. Um, so it was just like suffocating. And so we, um, I wanted the stress relief. Anyway, that's what attracted me to the company. But I thought, gosh, if I could use that, justify the products because I'm making a little money and maybe pay for like our electric bill a month. You know what I mean? Like I was like, if I could pay for a couple bills, um, within six weeks, I reached Ruby. Um, Dang. Sorry. Right? <laughs> And so like already past my goal, because my goal was like maybe $300, $400 a month, whatever, you know. Um, and so I was like, okay, there's something to this because I was just excited. Like I started the supplement, I started greens, I started Confianza, um, all that stuff. I tried the wraps, they worked. Like I had amazing wrap results, my first four wraps. So I just felt like I had unlocked this treasure cove of awesomeness that I didn't even know existed. I'd never used supplements before, maybe like a Flintstone vitamin. <laughs> like, I had no, like I didn't have any knowledge base for this whatsoever. And so like finding all this stuff was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was out there. And within two weeks uh, of Confianza, it completely changed my life. Like a lot of times people use that term like life changing, but literally changed my life. Like my mind wasn't racing all the time. I didn't want to crawl out of my skin anymore. And I could like enjoy moments with my family and my son without my mind being everywhere. And so I wanted to tell everybody 
in the world about it. And so I did. <laughs> so I was promoting rapidly because people saw my passion and excitement and it was so genuine because I was like, is this my answer to prayer? You know? And so it just, it happened quickly. Um, I saw what I had my hands on when I went Ruby in three months, I went diamond, um, earned a bonus that we had at that time, which is basically like the rank up bonuses. And at that point, after those first three months, I told my husband, I was like, if I can go triple diamond would replace our previous household income. Like, could I quit my teaching job and be home with our son? And he was like, yeah, we could make that work. And so that was like laser focus. I was like, I'm going triple diamond. And I worked my butt off that year because it was not easy. I had a baby at home. I had a full-time, very, very stressful job as a special ed teacher. And, uh, but I had a goal, I had a why, and I knew I wanted to be home. I needed it. And so, um, I worked very hard to get to triple diamond by the end of that school year so that I could put in my notice and say, I'm not coming back next year. And, um, when we made it happen. And so, um, you know, spent the next couple of years working on going prez and now I'm going ambassador. So it happens. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That makes me so happy. Not that there haven't been ups and downs. Like it's not, you know, I mean, I think sometimes we make it sound like it's like, ah, you know, angels yeah. were singing, but, but you stick with it and it keeps coming and it keeps coming and it, it's amazing. Yeah, totally agree. Um, my story is completely different. And so back in, <laughs> so I was also friends with Krista, but I didn't know Terry at all. I had met Krista at my church, I was teaching Awana on Wednesday nights, and Krista was one of my co-teachers, and um, we became decent friends, and then she and her family moved with the Army to Colorado, and I'm still here in Clarksville, not for very long, and um, she and I kept in touch on Facebook, and when she joined It Works, I thought she was sucked into an online scam, and I was like, that's cute, and um, she, I guess... See, the funny thing is that um, Terry, I think, was one of the people that Krista was afraid to ask about the business, which is what we call a chicken list. And I was one of the first people Krista thought of that was so broke I could really use the business. <laughs> <laughs> so Krista, like, I guess almost immediately asked me and I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. And then um, I remember at the time I was, I, was, um, I was dating someone that I thought was wiser than me and he wasn't. But um, he was like, that's a pyramid scheme. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. So I ended up, <laughs> I ended up blocking Krista on Facebook. And it was also the same time period of my life where um, it was my last ever semester in college. And I don't mean in the sense of I was graduating. I mean, in the sense of I was failing and failing and failing and failing and failing. I don't think they really kick you out of schools anymore now when you fail because they just want you to keep paying them. So <laughs> I was just continually failing. And, um, you know, I was working multiple jobs at a time. I was always broke. I was always stressed. I was to the point where I would, I would skip class to go to work. Um, I had no passion in the degree I was chasing. I just felt like it was what I was supposed to do. I was going for elementary education. Um, if you know me, you know, I love kids and it, it felt very natural to go for that. But but there wasn't anything that I was, you know, monumentally excited about when it came to actually getting a career in that. And the thought of dealing with anything but the actual kids was like, nah, that does not sound like fun to me. Um, so I didn't have any passion behind what I was going to school for. So all the little tedious things, uh, you know, like the papers and the extra assignments and whatever, I didn't, I, I wasn't like my, my heart was not there. So I did really well in the beginning and then I just kind of was kind of like tapering off and I was like okay I really need to take a break and it was that same time that I went to my advisor and I said I really think I need to take a break and she said I really think you shouldn't come back and I was like um it's your job to like tell me to stay in college so what do you mean like I'm not supposed to come back and I remember being so like offended when I walked out of her office and I was like whatever I'm still gonna go back next fall like I'm just gonna take spring semester off and then lo and behold I never did go back because I ended up um I told myself I'd make a lot more money than Krista would with her scam by working real jobs 
And so I got a full-time job at a, um, at a daycare and preschool and I got a part-time job at a restaurant and I was working all the time and I was so broke. I was working for, um, minimum wage. And when I got hired, they said they would do me a favor and pay me five cents more than minimum wage. So technically I was at seven thirty an hour instead of seven twenty five, And that was before taxes. So I never broke a grand from my full-time job in a month. And, um, fast forward just a few months after me and dude broke up and I was still broke. I ended up unblocking Krista just to creep on her life, see if she was still doing her scam. And, um, at that point she had replaced her teaching salary and earned $10,000 bonus. And I was like, what the hell? And I continued to watch her. I think, I don't know how many times I asked her for info and then completely like ignored her, but I know it was multiple times. And then, um, this was all spring of 2013. And then June of 2013, I was supposed to get a 25 cent raise from my job, which they decided, no, we don't feel like giving you that raise, which I don't know why I was so devastated over that. Because if you do the math before taxes, that's only $40 more a month, which is literally nothing. Like I make that in keto coffee cash in a few days. Like, <laughs> And I was devastated over that. I remember very distinctly, I was in my classroom one day and, um, I had a class of twos and threes and I had a little girl puke our snack, the kid's snack all over me, all over the floor, all over herself. And the owner of my own, my old job came in and all he did was look me up and down and go, you're going to clean that up. Right. And then he walked right back out. And I was like, I'm, I'm so done. Like, I'm so done with this job. And I just want, like, I didn't know what else to do. Like I felt so out of options and I was not interested in the products either. Um, at all. Like I was, I just needed money. I was so broke. I was so tired of being so broke. And, um, Krista came to visit. She had a business interest meeting at a Mexican restaurant. And if you ever want me to show up for something, you just include chips and salsa and Mexico food, Mexican food, <laughs> and I will be there. And, um, so I went and I fully expected to go and for Krista to be the only one there that was part of this scam. And, you know, I fully expected to walk in and be with a bunch of other women that thought it was ridiculous, but I walked in and I was the only one that had not yet signed up and joined the company. And I was like, what is going on? Terry was actually there. Kim Tushton was there too. And, um, you know, I heard some of these women tell their stories and I tried the body wrap and I told Krista if that stupid body wrap works on me, then I'll sign up to sell it. And then I put the body wrap on, I ate a chimichanga of rice and beans and drank a bunch of water and I was still smaller. So I was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's my the initial, best. oh, I skipped a part. <laughs> my student loans were due to be paid back that same month that I was denied my raise and the same month that Krista came to visit. And my student loan payment was $250, which was a whole quarter of my paycheck for the month. And I was like, I can't do that. Like, I have no way of doing that. And um, so that's why I signed up. I signed up with my debit card shaking in my hand. And I was, I was terrified. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I met my $250 goal. I didn't promote to Ruby in six weeks like Terry, but that's part of the beauty of this business is that we all have our different journeys. Um, but I got to Ruby, I think in a few months, and then I ended up going diamond in about a year. And at that point I had quit the daycare and I was nannying two kids. And then um, now I do this full time. So I paid off all my student loans. Uh, last March, I submitted my final student loan payment, and now I'm just saving up to move in about like 85 days is my timeline that I'm looking at to move to the beach with my dog. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. But anyway, okay. So Terry, like, what's your home life like? <laughs> and how do you work the business? <laughs> and that's about me. <laughs> and that's um, about me. Let's talk about yeah. you. So uh, I have two kids now. Um, so my son is seven, my daughter's two and a half, she'll be three in August. So, um, my son's in school, at least until school's out. And then, um, Anna's with me most of the time. I have a sitter that I get like random, you know, like one day a week or whatever, you know, um, it's just kind of random. It's a friend that does in home care. So it's not consistent. So pretty much with her at home and um, just kind of working around, you know, nap time and all that kind of stuff. So typically, like as far as working goes, I try to get some done. Like after I drop him off, well, I get up early. I get up 
my alarm goes off at 5.30. I get up and it's Jesus coffee mindset motivation, getting my head right for the day. Cause otherwise I, it, it's a disaster. So that's my like always. And then it's, you know, kids ready, you know, get out the door, school, whatever. So after I do drop off and everything, we come back, um, or I'll go work out or whatever. And then I try to get a little bit of work done and then always work power hours at nap time. And then try to do a little bit more in the afternoon that I can here and there. And then evenings, like once um, Michaela's home until after dinner and bed, you know, after they get to bed, I try to just put my phone up and focus on, you know, family. Um, and then I try to do a little bit more before they, or before I go to bed. So, but I do not stay up all hours of the night because it's important for me to be up at 530 and have that time. So I don't like, this is late for me. Like I'm getting tired. <laughs> I am too. Um, yeah. And my life is completely different. I do not have kids. I'm not married. I live with my sister. She bought this house. I rent from her. Um, we have two dogs. I very like randomly house sit, dog sit, whatever, but most of the time I'm running my whole schedule. Um, I, it's just different, but I do find routine is so freaking important because yeah. guys, when you, when you are busier and you're working this business, it's, I, I, I don't want to say easier, but it's almost easier because you have to do certain things in certain times. And when I went full time with this at first, it was like, Ooh, I have all day. I don't have to yeah. do, I don't have to do. I was way more productive later. when I was teaching. Yeah. Um, and I was way more productive when I was working, but, um, definitely getting up at the same, around the same time every day. Um, starting the day with my self development for sure. Um, and I do, you know, I read and then I write in my manifestation journal and then I do my affirmations and I try to meditate except I'm not great at it, but I'm trying to get better at it. Um, and I go to the gym, which I think sounds silly, but to some, I, I really think that's important self-development because it's so good for your brain and your body. Um, and you know, I have, I don't have any set routine, but I do power hours because I, I am just like the dog and up and I get distracted by every squirrel. And if I don't force myself to do 30 to 60 minutes of intentional focused work, I will not get anything done. Um, but I do find on the days where I am way busier, those are the days where I end up signing more people because I'm like, way. I'm just like, I get things done so much faster. Um, but yeah, Terry, can you tell me a little bit about um, your color personality? And yes. the kind of people that you tend to sign as well. So I am yellow with blue. Um, like very little, little green. Like no, no green. <laughs> and I'm really only red. Like if you take my food or my money. Take my food or money. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> but other than that, but I am, I am competitive. So, I mean, there is like, I do have a competitive um, streak about me and I'm not so yellow that like, I get my feelings hurt. You know what I mean? Like I don't question all the time. Like, Oh, I don't have my feelings. Yeah. And were you ever at a point but, in the business where you do feel like you were that yellow? Like, was there ever a point where you, you would get your feelings hurt at all? No, I don't think okay. so. Like, I mean, the business has definitely made me more less yellow in terms of caring what other people think about me. Yeah. That was a really, that was a huge struggle at the beginning. Um, but I've never been real, like, I don't know why I should, that didn't message me back. Like that doesn't, that, yeah, that, you know, yeah. that doesn't bother me, but I'm very yellow in terms of how I interact with people. Um, how I nurture my team. I love, I'm an encourager. I love writing. So I love writing handwritten notes. I love pouring into people with, um, words of affirmation and, um, you know, acts of service, like doing things for people or just finding like, you know, some kind of, um, like a nice scripture or a quote or whatever to send them. Like, I love encouraging people. Like, like that is how I show love and pour into people. So, um, typically the people that I enroll, I very rarely enroll greens because 
I can't like I'm like oh, this person's asking too many questions <laughs> like and I think I think he might think I'm I'm not very smart I don't know <laughs> and I enroll reds sometimes but I really have to push myself when I come to a red I'm like this person is not being mean this is just their personality like I literally have to self-talk it because I'm like they didn't use a smiley face what well, why didn't they use a smiley face <laughs> like, like, <laughs> why, why aren't they being jovial and happy um so I really have to like work through that but so I enroll a lot of yellows because I am yeah and so I'm like you're like oh you're so sweet let's do life together and let's run in a field of daisies and um so yeah so I would say I'm like that is most it but I am not also blues because you know I just I love to make jokes I'm funny you know what I mean yeah. so a lot of blues are drawn to me too so I enroll a lot of the yellows and blues um and and I'll find a few red gems here and there um but uh yeah I mean I feel like that's how you know it goes but I really feel yeah. like for a while I tried to avoid my color person like I was trying to push myself to be something I wasn't like I've got to be more whatever and then people see that it doesn't come across as genuine. Um, and once I really embrace like my personality as a strength and just sort of like loving on people and doing what came naturally to me, not only did I have more joy with it, like my business increased because I was operating in my strengths and my calling, you know? Yeah, so. yeah definitely. Um, where do you feel like you primarily like, how do you feel like you primarily sign distributors? Like, how do you, like, what do you feel like, why do you feel like they come to you? Or what, what do you feel like makes people end up joining your team? Just like a genuine um, curiosity. And then I'll just share a little bit too. Right. Um, I would say my posts, like people are always like, you're so inspired. Your journey's so inspiring. You're so inspiring. You're so, um, you know, encouraging all of that. Cause writing is a gift for me. So when I use that and I'm, you know, in sharing people, people respond really well to that. And that doesn't mean they always come to me, but I ask them, I plant the seed or whatever. And then they're like, it keeps playing in their mind. So it's that constant, like the pool posts and all of that, yeah. you know, really and the drawn consistency out. with them. Consistent. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. posted more than once a day for six years, like, yep. I am yep. constantly sharing my story, constantly sharing the products, constantly sharing my testimony. Like it is always there. So yeah, yeah. that's definitely, that's definitely it. So, and uh, then through yeah. um, host to post too. Sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, host, yeah, I was saying host to post queen. Yeah. Um, I am a red and blue. I thought for a while that I was just red with like, I'm about to choke, hold on. I thought that I was just red with like a touch of everything else, you know, like when you're new or when you're looking at the graphic and you're like, well, I really like all of those things. So maybe I'm all the colors. I'm the rainbow. But you're like, no, like really pick what resonates with you the most. Um, and I kind of discovered, Ruth kind of showed me this actually um, at Green Carpet last year. She was like, um, no, you're blue. And I was like, no, I'm not. Cause like, I like to be at home with my, I don't know. When I think of a blue, I think of like a, like a, like a, Woohoo! like a party person you know what I mean and I was like that's not me but thing is if I know everyone in the room that is me yeah and, you know loves to travel loves to have fun and I heard it put this way the other day on training Kelsey Thornton and Morgan McIntyre I mean Morgan Martin were doing a training and Kelsey said she literally has a hard time with doing things unless they're fun and I was like oh my gosh that's me like that's literally yeah me. um but anyway I'm a red and blue and I really have to work on I send a lot of voice messages to my team and I really have to work on and I'm trying to work on um leading with like a softer tone because I can come across so strong to people um so that's been a challenge but it's I'm very driven I'm very driven by I don't know just like constant improvement honestly um but I tend to sign distributors. Oh gosh, I don't even know. I sign a lot of just, it's odd because I have a lot of people that, that I talk to about the business, 
but the majority of distributors that join my team end up actually are usually the ones that come to me. And I think it's through my life posts, my consistent life posts, whether that's on Facebook or on Instagram. And I, I don't write like you, but I definitely would think I do consider myself like pretty decent at writing. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And the attraction marketing part of it where, you know, they, they see my life, even like the, the boring parts. And they're like, I want that. Like I want that as my life. Um, so what were we going to talk about next? I just blanked out. I don't know. I didn't write it down. Okay. Me either. Hold on, <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> I typed it out. I typed it out. Let me find it. Okay. Oh, I want to like have people pop stuff into the chat. Duh. Okay. All right. I'm excited. Okay, guys. So if you are listening and you're still with us, which it looks like we have a decent amount of people on here. Um, if you're still listening and you're with us, I want you to go and um, Terry has paid off a lot of debt with this business and so have I. So I want you to put a one in the chat if that is something that you like super dream of doing is paying off, you know, a bunch of debt using your business from your phone. There we go. We have at least one. That's awesome. That's awesome. One. One. If you you want to, you can share an amount. You don't have to. Um, My student loans ended up being a little over, mine was 22,000. That's so funny. Um, And I paid them off. I paid them off, guys. And I went slower than some people and faster than other people. Kristen, it cut out for you. Okay, well, Kristen, we're talking about debt. So if you could like really go for paying off some debt, throw a one in the chat. Um, Jennifer, I had $22,000 in student loans. And they weren't supposed to be paid off until um, like another six years from now, which is crazy. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it is crazy. But I ended up, um, I'm sure you guys know, we've talked about You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero in the team page before as like one of the first books you should ever read in this business. It's one of my favorite books. It's probably in my top three favorite, actually, maybe it's my number one. I don't know. I love that book. She came out with another one. Woo! Okay, cool. Yeah, me too, Jen. Um, she came out with another one, uh, a year or two after that, or maybe, I don't know, it was like two years ago and it's called, you are a badass at making money. And one of the calls to action in one of the chapters, I was sitting there reading it and it was like, okay, you're going to make a big step right now. You're going to go, there's something that you, there's some kind of money move that you need to make like right this second. And then in my head, I was like, dang, I have to go submit that final payment for my student loan. And it was like, I don't know, like 13, $1,300. And I had it, but I was like, oh, it's $1,300. I could just put it off. But I was like, no, I'm doing it. And like, you know, having the satisfaction of getting spam callers telling me they need to discuss my student loans with me and knowing that that's not even true because my student loans are paid off. That's a good feeling, guys. It's a good <laughs> feeling. It really is. Um, I just want to give you guys some hope because seriously, like any anytime that you are just like, I don't know if I can do this. Just know I paid off debt. Terry's paid off debt. It's, you can do whatever you want to through this business. It is insane. Um, okay, really quick. I want to, what was the other, why do I keep forgetting what I was going to talk about? I'm sorry, guys, because I didn't write it down. I just put it in my phone. Let's go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to set um, a timer really quick, and I hope you guys are paying attention, but I'm going to set a timer really quick, and I'm going to write down, ah, what's a bug? Oh, it's just a mat. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was a spider. I'm sorry. I just saw it land on the table. I was like, what? Um, anyway, I'm going to set a timer for three minutes and I want you guys to write down every quality you can think of that you would want in your dream distributor. So like the person that joins your team, like what are all the qualities that you would want? Maybe I'll do two minutes because three minutes sounds really long. Um, I'll do two minutes, but all the qualities you can think of that you would want in someone joining your team. Like what can you think of that you would want them to be like? I'm going to set a timer really quick. Do, do, do. You'll hear my dishwasher because I don't have any music on. Sorry, guys. Okay, I just set the timer. Write down anything you can think of. Let me get mine out.
Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Every time I put the timer on and I don't have the volume turned all the way down, it scares me. All right, guys. Okay, I want you guys to share in the chat what you have, what you have written down. And I'll tell you mine, and then Terry, I want to hear what yours are too. Yeah, okay. you do need that book, Jamie. Okay, mine are um, hardworking, reliable, self-motivated, consistent, coachable, willing to find the information they need on their own if they need to, kind, compassionate, positive AF, dedicated to self-improvement, loyal, passionate, honest. Ooh, I love honest. Thank you, Matt. Big mm -hmm. heart and a dreamer. Yeah, I want dreamers too. And compassionate people. For sure. Terry, what's on yours? Um, I had leader, kind, helpful, confident, reliable, consistent, focused, appealing, inspiring. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not like, you know, appearance wise, but just like yeah. a person that you're just like, you know, attracted to. Um, inspiring, positive, persistent, grounded, joyful, and bold. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Sorry, I'm trying to look at you again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, now I want to ask you guys something because I heard this done on another training and I was like, oh, I'm going to make this big long list of stuff that I want my dream distributor to have. Oh, I love that, Kristen. Hold on, let me see what Kristen said. She said, hardworking, passionate, genuine. Oh, genuine's a good one. Caring, yeah. natural leader, happy and fearless. I love those. Oh, I love those so much. Um, I just want to ask you, do you consider yourself to be wholeheartedly all of those things? Reliable, consistent, focused, honest, go-getter. I love that. Passionate, driven, optimistic, goal-oriented, confident, works with integrity. Oh, I like that. Dreamers, influence, purpose-driven, intentional, solid work ethic, genuine, always prepared, accountable, and desire to serve. Oh, I love these guys. I love these. I love these. So I just want to ask you really quick. Do you feel like you cover all of those qualities? And if you don't, do you feel like, I'm like, do you feel like you can improve in any of those? I know I can, because sometimes I'm just like, wow, I could really like, really, really, that is so true, Jen. She said, it's so fascinating how they go with our color personalities. Um, I could, I could, I mean, I can always improve. Obviously you can always get better, right? But, um, you know, I do feel like sometimes I look at this list and I'm like, okay, I could be like a little better in this area and this area and this area. So I just want you to know that the better you get at all of those qualities, the more likely you are going to attract people like that onto your mm -hmm. own team. It's so true. And, you know, Terry made a good point. She said, I, I mean, I've literally posted at least once or twice a day for six years. <laughs> you guys, consistency is like one of, cons literally doing the same little things consistently. This angle's terrible. I look like I lost all my hair. <laughs> seven has gone on um this this business really does come down to consistency like your customers and your potential distributors are only going to take you as seriously as it seems like you take your boat your business seriously right like they're going to take it as seriously as you do does that make sense but anyway okay we're gonna do something else really quick um i want you to make a list of like five to ten things you would do if i handed you a hundred dollars right now okay and I'm going to set a timer again really quick for one minute. So what would you do if I just walked up to you and handed you a hundred bucks? What's the first five things you would do or 10 things? Gas. Oh, sorry. I'm going to stop talking. Okay, now I want you to do the same thing with 500 bucks. If I walked up to you right now and I gave you 
what would you do with that 500? Okay, really quick, guys. If you want to, I don't know what time it is. What time is it? Okay, we're, we're only at 940. We'll only be here till 1240. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Terry's like, kill me now. Um, if you want to, you can bump some of those in the chat. I'll just tell you what I have. I have gas for my $100 list. I have gas, groceries, my dog's heartworm meds, because I got to get her some heartworm meds from the, um, from the um, vet. And then I have windshield wipers because I know I need to get them and I keep forgetting about them. And then um, my Norton antivirus renewal because it's like a hundred bucks and I got to go pay that because I forgot about it because it's like literally once a year. So I always forget about it. Um, and then for my $500 one, I got rent, bank, fix my motor mounts in my car because I really want to do that before I need to do that before I move. Um, bills and savings. And then I have six months of insurance, my car insurance. Kristen, so I'm going to check the chat really quick. This is so fun, by the way. Okay. Let's see. Boop, 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 boop. Buy a gift card and use it to pay it forward. Gas, snacks for kids and groceries, 500. Student loan bill, oh my gosh, 400 a month. Ouch. Groceries and snacks, $100 equals pay a bill, day trip to the beach or get my nails done, pay phone bill, pay off another medical bill, spa day, go out to dinner, $500 equals a weekend getaway. I love that. Um, so guys, those are just some, some ideas of things you can post about when you're talking about the business. Hold on, I see one more. Sorry, my, I know my hand is huge. $500 to pay an extra car payment and pay rent early. I love that. Um, so if you're ever like, oh, what should I post about today? Post about where you're going. When you're talking about the business, post it, talk about where you're going. You don't have to like truly have any kind of like insane story in this business by any means. Because, I mean, I joined for $250. Terry joined for free product and an electric bill. Like, neither one of us were like, yeah, so I'm going to sign up for this online thing and make a million dollars. But right. that's exactly where both of us are headed. <laughs> like, honestly. And it's so crazy. Um, and you have to keep in mind your potentials and the people that are watching you on Facebook, like, they just want to buy diapers. Like, they just want to pay their rent. They just want to pay for gas. They just want to be, you know back in the day before I found this, there were, there was a time in my life where I would only put five to $10 of gas in the vehicle I was driving at that time at, at a time. Like there was never me filling up the tank. It was like, literally there were so many times that I would get gas just enough to get the gas light to go off because I was like, I there was a time when $10 would fill up the tank, Audrey. You're just young. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I do remember right after 9-11, I remember it was really cheap because I was like 12 and I was like, well, gas is really low right now. Um, but anyway, you know, there are a lot of people. I do too, Kristen. I do too. We need to do this more often. Um, there are so many people that are watching you. And this is another thing to keep in mind. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try really hard not to go on a rant. There are so many people watching you and their lives look like they are perfect on social media and they are drowning behind social media like they are drowning there are people out there that want to leave their husbands but they can't because they're stuck in an abusive marriage because they have no money and there are people out there that like literally like morgan martin who they're they're putting all their groceries on credit cards there are people out there who like they're having family emergencies across the country and they can't go visit because they can't afford to hop on a plane like there are people out there who are literally con like consistently daily praying for something like this and they need you to continually share what you have your hands on because they need to know that you have it because a lot of people do not know this is a thing. There are a lot of people that have no idea 
that they can earn a full-time income while breastfeeding their baby. There's a lot of people that have no idea that like me, they can work two jobs and be insanely busy and find something they can do and fit into the nooks and crannies of their day using Facebook and Instagram. Like there are tons of people out there. So anyway, the point of that fun little exercise, cause I feel like a camp counselor or something. Um, first of all, with your dream DT list, you know, I need to do the same thing, but do your best to, to become those qualities, to fit those qualities, because I promise you the better you get, the better the people that join your business will be. Mm -hmm. Like you will attract better people with your own improvement. Um, and then as far as the $100 and $500, first of all, it doesn't even, like, it sounds so silly, but the people that are watching you, like it does matter that you go out and actually make this money, but like it kind of doesn't at the same time. Like as long as you know where you're going, they're like, okay, I want to do that too. Like if they don't even need, they don't even, there are people, you can post about earning a $10,000 diamond bonus and there are people out there that might think you already did. Like all they care about is the fact that you're talking about the fact that you're gonna do it. Like there's no, right. you know what I mean? And I'm not saying post it and then don't put any action into what you're posting about. That's not what I'm saying at all. But when you are posting about your business, talk about where you're going and talk about all the little things because the little things are the big things. This girl that I'm friends with on Facebook, I swear I can hear a bug. Oh, never mind. It's my, <laughs> it's my essential oil diffuser. Um, this girl that I'm friends with on Facebook the other day literally posted i just want to be one of those people that stares off into the distance while i'm pumping my gas and all these people were like oh my gosh same and I was, at first i was like what does that even mean like what do you mean and then i realized it's because all of them want to be able to stand there and just let the pump go until the tank is full without having to worry about it declining their card or running out of money or having enough to fill their tank isn't that nuts isn't that crazy anyway so when you're posting, talk about where you're going and just don't focus on the huge things. Just focus on the little things because that's what everybody's watching. They just want to be able to like get their groceries and pay for their baby's food and get formula because that's, that stuff's expensive. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. You want to open it up to a little bit of a Q and A? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Does anybody have specific questions that you want to ask either me or Terry? I should probably like open the chat and see if um do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. I know I feel like we're hanging out too except I feel like all of our friends are mute. <laughs> Can I do the chat? Wait, I saw it before. Where's so to be? Uh does anybody anybody want me to unmute them and you want to ask anything in particular? You can just wave and I'll like try to see you. No, no, Kristen, I see you. I see you, Kristen. My beautiful butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I like this? I don't know. <laughs> I think I just saw something pop in the chat. Oh, I just saw the chat. Yay. What's it say? What's it say? What's your big, biggest aha moment? Oh, gosh. Um, Terry, can you go first? <laughs> Did he freeze? Did Terry freeze? Uh, Dan tried to call. Okay, I was like, Terry, come back. He's on a he's at a guy's night. Oh, very fun. Um, Jen okay, said, well, "What's your you. biggest aha moment, Terry and Audrey?" So, are you comfortable going first, or do you want me to? Yeah. Um, okay, so one of my biggest aha moments, like ever in the business. Um, so you know, we've talked about making money and paying off debt and all these awesome things. And, um, making money was actually really hard for me. My screen keeps going blank, which makes me feel like it's cutting out. I have to go back. There we go. Um, not hard for me to actually make the money, but to accept the fact that I was making money. Um, because I grew up in a very, like, modest home with like basically we were poor but not like poor poor you know what I mean like I you know, free lunch at school like that kind of stuff so we never went without but but like I grew up with the money mindset that like people who had money were bad and it was noble to be poor and like like if you worked hard and you made very little money that was that right thing like that's the American dream and, um, and so that, that's good. You're hardworking people, you know, blue collar workers. And that's how I grew up. And so 
breaking that was really hard for me. I mean, I'm almost 40 and like, I'm still, I still have to like, literally it's one of my mindset things every day. Um, because the things that you learn as a kid before you're even like eight years old, they, they follow you the rest of your life. And so, um, you know, it was like, Oh, cool. Like I was cool with like diamond. I was cool with whatever. But when we passed and went into it and I got like $20,000 a month paychecks, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. So we started like spending it crazy, like not on like stuff for us, but like taking our team on like crazy, like private Island retreat, like whatever. Like we were, because I didn't, I couldn't, I was like, I, I don't deserve this money. Like I had worth problem, like all that stuff. So, um, that is something that like I had struggled with for so long. And finally, I, I don't even know what year it was at conference. Um, it was just this internal struggle of like, God's like, here's a great blessing. And I'm like, Oh, I can take that. And I finally like Ashley Sinclair was on stage and she said in this business, like you keep your hands loose like this and open and God is going to pour out the blessings and they're going to drip out onto others. And I was like, <laughs> like, yes, that's what it is about. Like I'm an instrument. Like it is flowing to me and through me, like, and not in crazy, ridiculous ways. Like I should just give it all away. Like it's okay. It's, it's an instrument. It's a tool and it's flowing to me and through me. And so that was huge for me because it really taught me to be wise with our money to be a good steward with our money um but to also accept the blessings that god is giving me um even if they're coming in the form of income like you know what i mean so um i had that that was a that was a big aha moment for me and it was definitely making my business stall because i was like i'm good i'm i'm good with this i don't why should i want any more why should i you know what i mean um and so God gave us a really big why to build a ministry retreat center, which is like millions and millions of dollars. And so now we need millions and millions of dollars. You know what I mean? So um, just being open to that. And that, that was a huge aha for me. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to like think of the most important thing, I think. Um, definitely related to what Terry said, because the most money I've ever made was through this business but like mentally I like capped out at that and I didn't realize that I capped out at that I just kind of like went with the flow and was like yeah I'm going double <laughs> I'm going double but like the like looking at a double diamonds average paycheck that's a crap ton of money to me that's like I'm I first of all I dropped out of college but second of all when I was in college I was going for teaching <laughs> all the jobs that I worked up until I nanny, all the jobs I worked up until then were very low paying jobs. And I've never ever, and it's not, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but like we grew up with a stay at home mom. Um, my dad worked. I think we went out to eat about once a month. It's like, I don't remember eating out really more than that. Um, and just the, the money mindset of like, you have to work really, really, really hard mm -hmm. for, for enough, not for a, a ton, but for enough, you have to work really, really hard for enough. Um, and that's kind of how I've always looked at it. And then I do not remember who talked about the secret. I don't, I, I'm super addicted to YouTube trainings. Like I love hearing other people's stories. Um, but I literally like, I, I watched the secret finally, like a year, maybe year and a half, two years ago ish. And I was like, Oh, this is so cheesy, but so cool. And it just made sense. Like the fact that the fact of like money in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's just a tool. Just like Terry said, it's just a tool. Like there, it's not evil in and of itself. It depends on who has it and how they use it. And, you know, money does not change the actual person. It amplifies what was already in that person. And I already know I'm not a jerk. <laughs> I already know that I'm not, I, I don't have selfish 
tendencies. I don't, you know what I mean? And the, once I realized, I think honestly, discovering the law of attraction, realizing that money wholeheartedly is literally just a tool, like, and then realizing um, the whole why not aspect, because when I started this business and then for years, me talking about five figure paychecks, me talking about making over five grand a month. And I've had any and everybody in my life outside of the business, just enjoy, oh good, I'm so glad Jennifer, just enjoy saying things like, why? Like, why do you need that? Why do you need that car? Why do you need to pay off your debt so early? Why do you need to quit your job? And then uh, there's still people that think I need to go back to school, which is really funny because I'm like, for what? Like, anyway, um, you know, why do you need to move to the beach? Why are you so unhappy here? Why, why is that even like, I mean, and then all the people, and honestly, the ironic part is that I know that a lot of the people that like to say things like that, they like to say things like that because deep down inside, they're so freaking disappointed in themselves for never actually chasing those dreams for themselves. So when people like us do it, that makes them feel really uncomfortable because it show it points out to them within themselves like, oh wow, like I'm 45 and I never moved to the beach. Oh wow, like now I have grandkids and I'm still in debt. Like, you know what I mean? Anyway, so the whole why not aspect and then discovering like, discovering like why like why not like why would i not go make as much money as possible and earn as much money as possible because um i want the things that i want i want to travel the world i want to be able to give literally anything i want without any without someone knowing where it came from without batting an eyelash like when i see you know family friends who had a house fire or something like that and there's a go fund me and i'm over here like okay well i can give 20 bucks like, that's not a good place to be. I want to be that person that is like, oh man, they lost their car. Maybe I should just like buy them a car. Like, I want to be that person. And it's not because I want people to be like, oh, Audrey Sink, I'm so great. She bought so and so a car. No, it's the, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be the vehicle that is able to be used in that way for other people. You know what I mean? Um, and I've always said anyway that like no matter where I'm at in this business, I'm probably still going to be shopping at Plato's Closet. So, but anyway, um, that was an aha for me for sure. Um, trying to think of anything else I was about to say, but yeah, I was raised very similarly, and it, that's how most people are raised. Like, they're they're raised with like very, and there's nothing wrong with being on a budget, but looking at money like it consistently like has to be limited the rest of your life. Like there's always going to be a limit on it. Like that's not healthy. Um, scarcity like, mindset. Yeah, scarcity mindset. And then yeah. the nobility of being poor. Like, well, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I can't, I can't, I can't do that. It's too expensive. Like you weren't, you weren't, you literally like, we literally were not created to live like that. Like God did not put us here so that we could be like, I'm going to put you here so that you can struggle the rest of your life. And when I put other people in your life who really could use a friend that has the financial provision to be able to help them out, you're going to have to say no, because you're poor. Like, that's just not the way it works. You know what I mean? Um, and it's hard to think about because when you're raised a certain way, you, you, like Terry said, we were just talking about this, everything that's taught to you, it's it, like, it takes root in your subconscious before the age of eight. So it's not until you're a grown adult and you're like, wow, that's why I think that way. Like you've literally been thinking that way for decades. So the whole changing your mindset about any of that, it's not going to happen overnight. Like it, it takes time and it takes consistency. And just like Terry said, part of my affirmations is about money. A lot of it is about money because I'm very much set up to go double this month and it very much still scares me but I'm almost to the point where I'm ready and I'm I have to cons I have to tell myself over and over again that I'm ready for that um but anyway sorry that was a long I, I talk a lot sorry <laughs> um let me see if there's anything else in here really quick the secret was amazing your dude it's literally like gonna put it on again tonight or tomorrow because i haven't listened to it in a while and it's so good and if you guys don't know what i'm talking about it's literally on netflix it's the best i feel like i feel like all of america is in debt but all of america has ten dollars to spend on netflix every month <laughs> um it's literally on netflix and it's called the secret and if you haven't seen look at these puzzles man Whew. 
If you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. And it's cheesy, but it is so good. It's so good. And it's true. Um, Kristen, I'm probably cracking you up. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, yeah. Anything else, guys? Did everybody enjoy this? Because I really did. But, you know, I like to talk, so. <laughs> good, good. Let me see if I miss anything really quick. Do, 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 do. Yes, yes, yes. Yay. I'm so glad. Okay. I think we're, you know what? Any closing words, Terry? Oh, let me see if anybody, when is the next power hour? Oh, I'm going to make the schedule for that for tomorrow. Um, when we get off of here, I will make the schedule for that and I'll post it in the team page. Um, try, one of my goals for this month is to do three a day. And I'm sorry that I don't put this schedule out like, like the week, like for the week. It's because A, like, I feel like people don't remember when I put the whole week out at a time. And B, because I never know, like, I work out at the Y and I go to different group fitness classes and the schedule's like always up and down and it just depends on my mood. So I'm just like, what time do I feel like doing power hours tomorrow? So I will put the schedule for that though in the um, team page tonight. See, my answers are just so long. I'm sorry, guys. Kind of makes me nervous. Okay. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, Terry, are you good? Can we close this down? Yeah, I can't think of anything else. I can't but yeah, either. we can okay. definitely do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome night. And if I, Terry, if I just hit like end, is it going to record? Like, is it going to mess up the recording at all? No, it'll just like stop it there. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, cool. It makes me super nervous. I'm like, I don't want to lose this. Okay, guys, I hope you have an <laughs> awesome night. I hope this helped you. Keep your list and use them for your life posts. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for getting on.